I've been asked to make a boot bench. I think it's self-explanatory, but I'll patronise you anyway. It's a bench to go in a hallway that you can sit on and store some shoes in. I'm going to make the frame out of this 44 by 44 mil pine. I'm going to need three different lengths so I can mark it out, take it over to the miter saw, get some stops set up and get all the pieces cut for it. I could put this together with my favourite method, dowels, or just screw it together, but I'm going to challenge myself and go for some mortise and tenons. So first, I'm going to mark out where I want the mortises to go. Now, I'm not going to be a complete traditionalist. I'm going to use a falsener bit in the drill to remove most of the waste. To make things easier, I get a fence clamped up to the drill, and I've got it set up so the centre of the drill bit goes on my centre line. There you go, second bit of patronising for the day, and then I can get the depth set. Unfortunately, this 1950s start ride drill is not battery powered, so I get out my EcoFlow and I can get that plugged into it to power it. Now drilling these out is pretty simple because I've actually made the mortises 30 centimeters long, so all I need to do is drill two holes with my 15 mil drill bit. So with all the holes drilled, they now need squaring up, and it's time to use the chisel. Luckily, I've got a 15mm mortise chisel, so I can get that nice and sharp using the leather strop, and then I can start squaring up the holes. I was a bit intimidated by cutting all these mortises, but using the drill, meaning the depths already set, it was pretty easy and it didn't take that long to do. So with all those mortises cut, it's on to the tenons. I get those marked out and this time I'm going to use the bandsaw. I can get the fence moved over to my line and locked in place. And then I clamp on a scrap of wood that's going to act as a depth stop. The bandsaw gets hooked up to the EcoFlow, the dust collection connected, and get that put into the EcoFlow and get everything powered on. So with all that set up, this should be idiot proof. I push it in until I hit the stop, turn it around, push it in again, and then I can flip the whole workpiece over and repeat. Now to remove the waste pieces, I can use a mitre gauge and I set up a stop, but actually I don't think that was needed and I can just see when I hit the line. But that's something I've learned now and it make it quicker next time. So now to get it all glued together. So I get some PVA wood glue put into the mortises and then the tenons just get pushed into place. I have to say, it's very satisfying when everything goes together with a nice tight fit. I was nervous about doing this glue up in one piece, so I decided to do it in stages and get the two ends done first, then put together, clamped up and left to dry. These longer pieces are going to be the shelves and I want to have some MDF as the shelf and I want that to be recessed in. So I mark out where I want the recess to go. I'm going to use my Trend Router Table and T14 Router to cut it. So I raise the bit to the depth of the MDF, get the router plugged into the EcoFlow, dust collection hooked up, and everything turned on. Now this is going to have three layers and two wooden shelves, if that makes sense, because I'm going to count the floor underneath as a shelf. Anyway, it means I need to cut this recess into four pieces. 
time I've done all that, the glue's dried on the first couple of pieces. I'm clearly a very slow worker. So I can get these pieces glued into place. The four that have the recess, and then a top one that doesn't. People always advise having a dry assembly before glue up. I didn't listen, so I ran out of ceiling space halfway through and had to move the whole thing down onto the floor. But I managed to get it all put together before the glue went off, and then I can get it back onto the bench to get some clamps on. Now this thing is 122 centimeters long, and I don't have any clamps long enough, so I'm just clamping some blocks of wood on halfway along it. I can then hook the longest clamps I have over that block onto the end and pull everything tight and do this from either end and each side. See, the old adage is true. You can never have enough clamps and I didn't. Anyway, I can now get this out of the way so I can start work on the shelves. I can work out what size they need to be, get it marked out onto the MDF, and then I use the track saw to cut the pieces to size. I left this thing overnight to dry, and now I can get all the clamps taken off, and then I want to give the whole thing a sand down. I get it sanded down to 120 grit. Now I'm going to paint this and I'm going to go with a grey and I'm going to use some Cornish milk paint. I'm a big fan of this milk paint. It's a bit more expensive than regular paint but it goes on so easily and dries quickly. It also covers well on an MDF which can be quite tricky. I get a couple of coats of paint on, leave it to dry and then I can get the shelves fitted. I'm not attaching them with anything, they're just going in with a friction fit. Now for the top of this, which you're going to be able to sit on, I'm going for some engineered oak. It's a bit like a kitchen worktop, but thinner. I work out what size I want it, get it marked out, and then I'm going to use the track saw again to cut it to size. I want to add a little round over to three sides of this. So I get the bit, put in my little Bosch trimmer, and add that on. I give it all the sand down, going up to 120 grit, and had to remove a few saw marks from the sides, and then I can finish it. And I'm gonna use an oil-based finish. I get two coats of this on. When the oil's had a chance to dry, I need to get the top actually attached. And what I'm going to use is little L-shaped brackets. So I just get them screwed onto the base. Now instead of attaching the top to the base, I'm going to attach the base to the top. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Anyway, I flip it all upside down and do it that way. Whilst I have it upside down, I'm just gonna add some of these rubber feet. These were left over from when I built the garden table. So just one screw attaches them. So that's it all done. So unfortunately this is not for me. I actually made myself a boot store early in the year and I've got nowhere in the house for something this big. The EcoFlow has been indispensable in this project, allowing me to use all my mains powered machines to make this bench. The model I have is the Delta Pro and there's a link down below to their website if you'd like to check out this and their other models. So thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.